All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And here we are. On what is technically my day 30 of plugging away on this project at a couple of hours here and there. Um, I'm going to try and keep plugging away on some of these totems. Uh, to see if I can't get uh, get enough of them done, that uh, that I'll be able to uh, get this done. Got a couple on the go. I'm gonna see if I can't get them done and into the game. Um, I also really, really need to clutter this place up a little bit, so I need to make a few more assets. Uh, to fill up the place. Um, and I've got some issues like this guy is way too big. Um, I made the bench a little bit bigger than it should be to fill up a little bit more space, but it wasn't until I put a guitar beside it that you can see the ridiculousness of the scale of this thing. Um, and so I'm going to try and pitch it down a little bit so that it feels a little bit more believable uh, in terms of scaling. Let's bring this down to the ground. Maybe something like that. Try and get it actually on the ground. Um, and so yeah, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to fill up a room here and uh, make sure that things are uh, making sense. So that feels a little bit better. I've got another one of those at the back of the room here. Uh, this one, I'm a little bit more okay with it being oversized because with it being overturned, you can't really tell too much of the scale or how big it is uh, when uh, when compared to the surrounding area, uh, which, which ends up working quite nicely. Um, so step number one, uh, the first thing I want to do before I do anything here is to go in and, uh, and plug up these stairs so that nobody can get up there. And uh, I would like to do this by dumping a bunch of crap down the stairs. Um, I would like, if I could, to use something other than the uh, other than the same crap that's on this set of stairs, which is the uh, the the components of the hutch. You can also see up here that the door is still wide open, and I need to uh, I need to build that in. So maybe I'll do that first. Whoa, Pedro, my friend, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in forever, or heard from you in forever. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Um, there's a uh, there's a Discord channel uh, that we are using to communicate with uh, one another as well, Pedro. If you wanted to be part of that, shoot me an email, and I will send you an invite into the uh, into the server so you can you can come and chat with those that are there. Um, there's a bunch a bunch of people there. And so, yeah, yeah, feel free to uh, to do that if you're interested. So, I think the first thing I'm going to do. Oh, this is uh, this is actually maybe something um, that I would I thought I would show. Um, my wife and I are putting in next summer, next spring. We are going to be uh, dropping a pool in the backyard, um, which is nice, and. Uh, I've been kind of plotting out, um, plotting out what we we're going to do in the backyard, and uh, being who I am, I'm using 3ds Max for this. Uh, what you're seeing here, the uh, the white information in the back here, this is actually scan data of my home. Um, I, I took these photos myself. I took them in the uh, in the backyard with my DSLR and uh, used Agisoft to, uh, to combine them together into a 3D model. I only took about 20 or 30 uh, pictures, not, not a hell of a lot, which is why uh, you can see a lot of gobbledygook here, like my, uh, my patio set didn't, didn't really show up, and there's you know weird, funky artifacting in places like this. Um, I can see a flower pot here that kind of made it in, but not really. Um, another one here. Uh, but you can see it did a pretty good job of the fence. You can see that there's a fence, and you can see there's lattice work above it. You can actually even tell that one of the fences has been blown out. Uh, this guy here, 
It looks like somebody heavy fell against it. I don't know who the fuck that is. Um, but, uh, yeah, that fence is all blown out. And you can actually see it really, really nicely from here. But anyway, um, in planning where the pool is going to go and how big the pool is and, uh, and the deck that we want to get installed, um, I've been kind of plotting out um, where to put things and how big things are going to be. Um, by means of uh, of building them in this in this model, so I have a a human being who is about the height of me, so I can see how deep the pool is going to be, and I can see kind of where uh, where everything is going to go uh, in relation to the pool, and so um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how that's kind of worked out thus far. And uh, anyway, I I use this to also uh, I can. I can visualize things in my head fairly well, which I mean, I think, I think relates pretty well to being a part of this industry and being a part of this type of thing. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things that, that I have no problem doing. Uh, but my wife doesn't have that ability, um, which actually confounds me a little bit because it's, it's just something that I've always had and I've, I've never known the other side of that. And so one of the things that I'm doing with this is just to kind of help her out so she can visualize what my goal is for the backyard and and uh where things are going to go like you can see that we're going to we're going to end up losing most of the yard which is why we're doing it you know when my kids are about to turn 9 um instead of you know when they're 5 when they are going to want to play in the backyard and do things like that but once they're 9 you know they don't care about the lawn anymore and so anyway that's what this is that's why I had this open um was just to kind of throw something together to show my wife and uh give her a little bit of an example i have uh, i've put my gazebo in here which already is standing in the backyard i just kind of threw a very uh rough uh block in of that going but anyway yeah that's what this is 3d scan data of my home um and uh yeah just kind of visualizing where the deck and the patio are gonna go and so that's what that is uh i've gone and saved this file so i'm gonna go and uh get out of here and I can get out of this project now and go into Cabin in the Woods. So the first thing I want to do is that door uh, at the f the far end. Um, what am I doing here? Structure? I think it's structure. Yeah, it's structure. I'm going to open that up. Let me go check my email because I think I should have gotten something from good old Pedro by now. I did not. So, um, the reason I want to open this file up is that this file has the opening, uh, which is where the, uh, where the, uh, the door needs to go. I didn't realize, I want to go check this here. I didn't realize that I had actually set up a little bit of a hallway at the end of it. Uh, which was news to me. Let's switch this over to unlit. And yeah, I actually do have a little bit of a runway here before the uh, the door. I think I may need to move that beam. We'll see what this looks like once it's lit, but that beam may, may have to move. So the, the idea here is that I'm essentially just going to build a door frame that's going to go in here. Um, and in actuality, I, I kind of want to just take this where I've got it right now, just kind of pointing here. I want to just extend this and turn it around a corner just so you don't see empty world outside here. I mean, I'm going to leave the door open a little bit, um, but that'll be important to, uh, to making this work correctly. So to do that, we're going to start with this, which is my, my floor mesh here. And I'm just going to take these guys. Let's see. I'm going to extrude them a little bit. Maybe something like that. And then to make the corner, we're going to actually detach this. And then we're going to go back to our pivot and we'll center it. And then I'm going to snap it 
using my vertex snapping. You're not going to the right place to come on you. This one. Let's see if I can get this to work here. Let's try this again. It looks like my snaps are off. Let's go make sure the vertex is on. I'm going to turn off the grid points. But only snaps, snaps of the vertices. Anyway, the reason for moving the, um, the pivot point on this is that I'm going to use a... Uh, let's reset my X-form. I'm going to use a symmetry on this. And I'm going to rotate the symmetry... 45 degrees, like so. And what that's going to do is it's going to build the 45 corner, or the uh, the 90 degree corner on that 45, something like that. And then I can grab, I guess it would be the hollow openings here. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the door on the other direction. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, to have a door this way where it would open up and, and potentially block everything. Um, but that's that's all I'm going to need. The door will block everything else. So we're going to grab the home. And we're going to attach this element back again. And I'll grab the open borders here. And we'll just weld this back all back together. And just ensure there are no remaining holes other than the... Uh, the opening here. So yeah, so that'll work nicely. So from inside here now, I go down the stairs. There just is something at the top now instead of just a void looking out into the world. And I can't even, like, even with the camera here, I can't get to the point that I can see around the corner to the void, which is what I want. Um, I'm not worried about players getting there. Again, I've got enough crap on the stairs that uh, that won't be an issue. But what I'm going to do is re-unwrap this now that I have these uh, new polygons. So come and get it. So that should be all of the new. And I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, mapping and flatten mapping. And then uh, we're going to just turn on the preview here check our pattern um and the reason i want to turn that on is because i'm going to scale this stuff down until the scale matches everything else which is probably going to be best seen from this side back up a little bit Good enough. Um, let's see if I can't find a place to go and tuck these little nit bits in now. Let's do this. Put that one in there. Because of summer well in. What is that? Gunny. Uh, oh, it's a little corner. There we are. Make sure that I do scale everything. Put those in there. Again, I'm not overly concerned about uh, about making this absolutely perfect because it's it is a little uh, a little nook and cranny that's tucked away, which will uh, make it a little bit easier to. Uh, that looks like something that could be fixed. I'm 
may not be what I think it is. No, that's fine like that. Apparently, I just have a triangle somewhere. Okay. Uh, that guy is outside the shape. This. I think I'm going to do this just with the vertices here. Just tuck this back in. Okay, convert that in. So this is the uh, the floor mesh, and I should be able to just overwrite that in order to uh, to go and replace this. So floor FBX. Uh, let me double check that that is indeed what I called this mesh floor. And let me sure make sure that that's what it's called in here. So it appears to be called walls in here. Indeed, it is walls, not floor. So we'll go replace walls. Like so. And then in here, we'll go and uh, re import that sucker. So that gives me the corner here now, which, again, if I go down the stairs, prevents me from seeing anything outside that gap, which is good. Mm. I don't know if they support audio. I guess it's in... I know you can upload video files, but uh, I don't know that they support audio at all. Uh, I would I would assume if they've got video files, you can throw some audio into the video. Uh, but if you're talking about like a 3D file, I don't think so. I don't think there's any support for... Uh, there's any support for audio in that. Okay, Pedro. Discord link incoming. Okay. Uh, that is a way. Anybody who's in the... Uh Anybody who's in the Discord, I believe Pedro is incoming. Anyway, with that done, I'm going to go and create myself a doorway here. And so this is just going to kind of live inside this gap a little bit. I'm going to put a light bulb in here in Unreal. And, uh, and that'll be that. And so we can go create a door. Um, now, I'm not going to worry about this door being incredibly accurate in terms of its dimensions. And the only reason I don't need to worry about dimensions um, is that you can't get near this door. Um, and since you can't get near it, I don't care. Um, that is of no no bother to me whether or not it's, it's exactly the right dimensions. Um... And so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm doing what I normally do, which is to slap in a spline. Um, this is going to be the door jam. Um, I've got it about the right size here. And uh, we're just going to go do rendering. And we're going to render this as a radial, or a, not a radial, a, a rectangular shape. And we'll make it wide enough to be a door jam. So let's say maybe something like 15 centimeters. And you can see it fits quite well inside this area. It's actually uh, oversized in terms of the shape. And that's because the spline runs through the center of the geometry. But that's that's okay. I'm keeping that in mind. Uh, next, we're going to change the 6 to be about an 8. And again, because I'm only getting half of that, that's actually like typing 4 in. Hello, Michael. How you doing, brother? Yeah, I think that's going to work. Oh, I think that's going to work nicely. Let's bring this up, I think, even further. I'm going to go 12 so that it's actually 6. 
Now, I don't actually need the uh, the jam to be at the bottom either. That's uh, not how door doors work. Uh, however, we'll see about that. <laughs> so what I've done here is I've placed an edge in the middle so that I can delete the outer proportions. And now this actually fits beautifully inside this gap. Uh, we're going to delete the bottom of this so that I can bring this flush with the ground here. Uh, in order to do that, we'll find out at which height we've set our upper floor. And then we'll go put these guys in. Like so. And then all I want to do uh, in the end of this is bridge this so that I don't end up with... Uh, I don't end up with a weird gap in the middle of things. Good, brother, good. How's the game going? I saw you were uh, launching another season, eh? Okay, so this is going to get renamed Door Jam. And now I can throw a door in there and leave it agape. Actually, I think I'm actually going to hinge it here. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I'm going to I'm going to cheat this a lot in order to amplify the effect of light coming through this doorway. Um. And the way that I'm going to do that is by just making the gap between the door and the door jam a little larger than it actually would be in real life. So we're going to clone this as I detach it so that I end up with two things here, a door and a door jam. And then on these guys, we're going to do an extrusion. I'll make sure this is local normal. And now all I want to do is just work out how big of a gap I want between the door and the door jam. So if I bring this back, let's go take a look at that like this, right? There's the gap, which again, I want to kind of, you know, exaggerate it a little bit. Nice, man. Nice, man. I'm stoked. Fall Guys. I did not see Fall Guys. What is Fall Guys? That sounds like it's another uh, Battle Royale. Free on PlayStation Plus could make it the next Rocket League. Oh, it's kind of like those Japanese TV shows. Oh, that's clever, man. It's a clever looking game. Oh yeah, were you were you a member of that of that beta of said beta? Did you get to partake? Cool, man. Okay. So there's my door inside the jam. I'm going to give it a hinge or two or three. The hinge is easy. It's just going to be a cylinder that I'm just going to throw in in the right place. Again, I'm going to kind of cheat the scale of this a little bit. Uh, really because no one's going to be able to get near this thing. And so the more I can get away with uh, doing less here, the better this is going to work. So I'm just going to create these little uh, hinge areas here uh, to, again, just make it feel like the door is actually connected 
to the frame and not just this floating block in the middle. That, that, and that. So again, now when we see this thing with light emanating from it, um, there'll be a gap in the light, which is where the hinges are going to be. Whatever side I put them on, that side. So they'll stop the light from going through in that area, which should make it look like it's actually connected. Oh, yeah, eh? Uh, party games like that are fun to watch, though, right? Especially if they're... Um, and most party games do this, right? They're fairly short in their uh, in their game loop. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing you're doing, right? Really nice short game loop. Makes for, uh, for really fun watching because you don't have to commit a very large amount of time to it, which is nice. Okay, uh, I want to move the door because I don't actually want it there. So I'm going to move it to the, I believe that's the back. Uh, let's move this here. And we'll remove those and I'm going to move the door back so that it's in the jam. And then attach all this together. So we'll attach the cylinders to one another. Jesus, my eye is bothering me. The rising sun. So we'll do a couple of those. Um, and the nice thing is that I'm actually just going to attach the door as well. And what that'll do is now the door is actually hinged the right way. So I think what I might do is oh, I was going to export the door uh, not open so that I can manipulate it. But I'm going to I'm going to not do that. I'm going to crack the door open myself. And I'm going to leave it something like that. Let's make sure that I'm doing all this the right way. And then I'm not opening that the wrong way, which I did. And I put the hinges on the wrong side. So we're going to attach all of this together. Let's do effect pivot only and center to object. And then we'll attach the door. And then I'll just mirror it. Whoop. Uh, which is good. But I want Y as well. There we go. So then I'm just going to reset the X form on this so that it's not broken. And we'll go UV it. And we should be good to throw this into the engine. Um, in talking to Ian, I don't know if Ian's watching right now. I was talking to Ian and he was showing me some uh, somebody's artwork. And it made me realize that I have an asset I created for this project that is currently not being used, uh, at least not in the way that uh, I want to use it. I do believe my door's got a hole in it. Let's go fix that. Holes in the geo are bad. They're going to result in light bleed, which I don't want. And so we'll see what we can do about that. Um, all right, all right. So let's do some UVs here on this. And uh, we're going to do, that's all the polygons, all the polygons, get them all at once. Yeah. And we're going to do a mapping and a flatten mapping. Because, really, <laughs> stupid thing. Uh, and then the only other thing that I want to do is put them cylinders back together again. Uh, because they've all been, they've all been broken open. Let's see how many of these we can get going here. Mm 
Okay. It should be. It should be all of them. All of them. Wipe them out. All of them. Okay, let's bring this down here. Relax it a little bit. Yeah, so what is this? Unnecessary. And this is not complete. So let's go and uh, let's go back to my edges and bridge this quick. Or not bridge, but weld it back together. And should end up with a. Uh, there we are. So we'll clean that up, straighten it. I think I might have better success with the UVs if I break the door jam into components. Uh, and in fact, I'm probably going to weld these things together as well. Wink. Because that'll result in a, uh, a cleaner mesh, as it were. So that one's good. What's that? Oh, that's the top. I probably don't have to worry about that. Okay. So let's go and do a re distribution of these things. Let's increase the. Wow, there is still a lot of dead space in here. Something strikes me as being odd with this. The door doesn't look normal. It looks like it's. Con there we go. Contorted. Boo doo doo. Let's rotate this back. Let's do that. That's better. Not perfect, but better. So I'll call that done. Uh, I'm not even going to bother with the door handle. Yeah, I should put a freaking door. Put a freaking door handle on it, man. The door handle, I'm just going to use a cylinder that I'll put in the right place at about the right size. I'm gonna re Again, I'm really going to cheat this because you won't be able to see it. Well, let's see what we can do here. Uh, I'm going to increase this to 16. Convert this to an edible poly. Rotate it to match the door. Put it in the middle of the door. And we'll scale it locally. Move it locally. And then what I'll do, we'll put a edge down the middle. Chamfer set edge. And we'll try and center this a little bit better. And then we'll take this and we'll bevel it. And while it won't be a perfect door normal, it'll be close enough to a door knob that it'll read that way from a distance. So let's uh, let's do this too. I'm gonna quad off the caps by deleting, selecting side, removing. I'm gonna be able to do both sides at once. And then, uh, 
the end, we'll call that a day. So I'm just going to attach it here to this mesh, too. The only reason I'm attaching all this stuff, again, the door doesn't... Oh, well, that's, that's a big-ass doorknob. The door doesn't actually need to be functional. Um, it's in the wrong place, too. The doorknob doesn't actually have to be functional. It, uh, it just has to look the part. And so that's why I'm kind of cheating it a little bit. It's a door you can't get near. A door that, uh, you know, is just supposed to kind of fake the part a little bit. So let's do this edge, this edge, and this edge. And we'll do a chamfer here. A roll. Try that chamfer again. Let's go to the quad chamfer. Uh, I hate it when it does this. It always gets a little funky whenever you've got a triangle in the way. Up there. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Okay, let's go edit the UVs on that sucker. So let's move this over here. Do a cylindrical mapping. Loads. Does this fit? Good enough. Turn that off. And we'll go unwrap it. Come on, you. Let's do this one. Not loving that. So let's do this. No. This. And this. And this. I haven't counted yet uh, to see if I've <laughs> if I've passed the uh, the halfway point of my totems, but I'm definitely close. I altered the uh, one of the totems on uh, an idea my wife had that I completely agree with. It was a brilliant idea. I'm actually angry I didn't think of it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've got a totem that'll uh, be much better suited to uh, being swapped out for something else. Why is this all... I did not ask for that. Okay, that guy's good. That one's fine. That one's fine. This guy needs some edges welded. Let me pop this over. Let's do this and weld. Nope. Nope. Turn that off. This and weld. Okay. Let's see if that gives me a better... A little better. And I don't care where it goes. Yeah, it seems like a bunch of edges that I didn't want split. Split anyway. Okay, so that 
looks to be more intact. Straighten it out. Take these guys. And we'll do another pack. Good enough. Okay. I don't think I'm going to bother making a unique material for this. I'm just going to export it. Let's throw it into the game. Put it up here and zero it out so it goes into the right place. Which looks pretty good. I'm going to go and put my light in here before I do anything else. Which is just going to live up here. Uh, I need to see this. So I think I'm going to put a... I think I'm going to close this off, too. I don't want to have all this light bleeding out into places that I don't necessarily want it. And so I'm going to put the light there. Let's go to the lit. And we'll take a look at how that's going to work here. Good, yeah. So this reading is coming from kind of behind the door, which is what I wanted. Um... I may go and crank up the intensity on it a little bit. And I am going to warm it up a little bit, too. I'm kind of blown away that it's not actually giving me more light bleeding down the stairs. So let's, let's try moving it. here really eh? that's about as good as it's gonna get I'm really surprised that it's not giving me more bleed down here. Regardless, that is what I want. And I'm going to go and just put the uh, concrete material on the door. Again, with it being backlit like this, you'll never see it the right way. So I don't, I don't much care what the uh, material looks like. Uh... Mega scans, surfaces, damage concrete. We'll put this guy on the door. And apparently, on all our facets of the door. That looks pretty horrible. Uh, let's go to this one. Let's see if this is any better. It's just the floor texture that's repeating. Again, you're not going to get to a point where you'll ever be able to see it. So, I'll call it good enough. Just so I'm not getting the, uh, the default material on anything. Go full screen here. Oh, yeah. So it does, it gives you the impression that there's something else going on up there, even if you can't get to it, which is good. And, uh, we're going to go unlit here for a second. And I think I'm going to put a light at the top of these stairs as well. In kind of much the same vein as that one. 
Let's increase the attenuation radius. I'm blown away at how much decay I'm getting on these lights. Okay. So that too is just going to give me enough to indicate that it looks like something else is going on there. Um, textures are more expensive, Levi. Um, textures are more expensive than not using textures. Um, if you can, if you can plug away at a material using just the math i mean it's it depends on how much math you're doing i mean obviously you could you could do a ton of arithmetic inside of a material instance and and end up with a very expensive material um but it also depends on what nodes you're using too right so uh transparency very very expensive uh reflectivity very very expensive um, and so it, it has a lot to do with those things as well, you know, um, in terms of, of transparency, like I've got next to nothing in my world here that has transparency on it. Um, all I've got are these little cobwebs that I've done. Um, nothing else in here is transparent. I've, I've made sure everything else is opaque. And so that's going to boost the performance a little bit by, by not having transparent materials. But if you can get away with doing, you know, just some math somewhere, that'll uh, that'll definitely save you. Now, what it's saving is not in, it's not just performance; it's memory, right? So all of your textures need to sit in memory somewhere. They need to sit on your video card's memory, so that when they that surface gets rendered, it can call up that texture and use it. Um, but if you're using the math, uh, it doesn't need to sit in the memory of the GPU. Um, the math gets calculated kind of on the fly when it's doing things. Yeah, no, that would be that would be a decent way to go. Um, you know, you probably still want to do UVs so that you get some decent shadows on things if you're going to be doing uh, if you're going to be doing baked shadowing. Um, that would be a smart thing to do. But yeah, no, I mean, as long as you're, as long as you're just slapping colors on things, and, and again, like, I wouldn't make a different material for each color, you know, I would make the color a variable that you can manipulate whenever you need a different color, um, and that'll actually, that'll perform really, really well. It's one of the reasons that games used to be made like that, right? If you go back and look at the Nintendo 64 era, there's a reason everything was simple geometry with one color on it. It's that it was, it was really, really fast for it to render that way. Um, okay, I haven't blocked... I haven't blocked me stairs yet here. You got it, brother. Okay, let's go into my uh, mega scans here. 3D assets, and it's the military wooden crate? No. This is an old silo. Yeah, it's getting there, man. I've, I've got a... I've got to pick it up a little bit. Might do that. I'm going to run up just to hear you sing it out. And I do believe what we rely on. So I'll try and put one of these guys on the stairs. I like this mesh because it's fairly big and holds up really well. And so I may use this as the main, the main blocking volume here for this thing. 
something like that. Which is going to block the stairs a little bit. And then I can put some crap in behind it, which I think will uh, help make it look a little bit more cluttered. I'm undecided and there's no... Hmm. Over here, my friend. Come here, my friend. Okay. That is going to... Do absolutely nothing. Where the hell did it go? And put it there. And I'll put a few other things up there that I think will block block the volume nicely. Um okay, so let's save all here. And now that I've done the doorway, I think that's all. Oh, let's go grab. So I have a particle effect that I made that I would like to put in here. I'm going to need to view this from above, though, because the particle volume itself is not quite large enough to fill my area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to view this from the top. And I'm going to go edit this thing. Actually, I'm going to make a copy of it is what I'm going to do. Uh, duplicate, and we'll call this basement dust. And the reason for that is that I don't want to manipulate the dust that I've already got that's inside the other room, uh, which is like the, the menu room. Um, and what I'm going to do is we're going to swap this out. And then I'm going to go inside of this guy here. And we're going to go play with the bounds of this thing. Uh, I can find initial... Where's my location? That. Um, there. Not actually a sphere I want. Location. It's a box. Cylinder. Sphere. Really? You can't create a box. Initial. I guess initial location would be a box. Let's see here how this works. Start distribution. So this thing is 3,000. So we're going to say a maximum of 1,500. 1,500. And we're going to go minus... 1500. Let's zero this guy out. I think I only need uh, 750 minus 50. There we go. We're going to go a little bit bigger. Uh, 
Okay, let's go to the front or the left. And right now they're all spawning at ground height. So I'm going to bring it up to about the halfway point. And... At 364. Let's call it 400. So we're going to go 200 and minus 200. Okay, so perspective. Drop back into the room. Hmm. So we are getting really tiny particles here. Okay, let's go into the basement dust, initial size, and let's crank this up a little bit. Five and ten. Or a meteorite. Wow. Odds are we're going to be all right. Odds are we're going to be all right tonight. So I can see them when I get near light. Somewhat. I can probably reduce the size a little bit. Five. Nope. That should have been five. And ten. Yeah, I can see them near the lights. They're itty bitty. It might be better if I made a few more of them. I'm going to go into the color here, too. Uh, color over life. Let's go to my alpha over life. Okay, so what do we got? Spawning at zero. Now well, they're all the way to one. And they fade out. Okay, let's look at the color then. Maybe the color's just too dark. The color's at 0.1. I'm going to set it to 0.25. And see if that works any better. It's funny the candles don't light them up at all. Let's see what we can do with the amount. Uh, spawn. Uh, 
I'm not really buying it as being dust in a larger environment for whatever reason. I think it works smaller when it's a little environment, but once you see a bunch of them like this, I don't know that it's reading as volumetric. Let's go see what this is doing in performance. Uh, lit. Uh, I want shader complexity. Yeah. That's a little bit of an issue. When you get enough of the room... Not digging it. I don't think it's worth. I don't think it's worth the trade off. Like, they look neat. But the expense that I'm occurring, incurring in order to get them, I just don't think is worth it. So maybe. Maybe we just scrap them. I definitely think they look cool, but especially when you get them right up close to the camera and they're out of focus, they look really cool. They're just too expensive. If I can make a smaller one that would just live around each light, it might be a little bit more worth it. But uh, I can't. <clears throat> I can't pooch my performance for that. It's just not worth it. Let's save all. Let's see what we can do about uh, adding more volumetric lighting to this. And see if we can't get something that's going to read a little bit better. Whoa. It's really cool. It's a little thick. Well. Might be a little strong. Let's go two. I mean, I like the effect that it's having. Oh, don't do that. Whatever that was. Okay, let's grab our lights now.
Put it in a blueprint. Which I think I left in my mesh folder. There you are. I'm going to do this on the point light that exists in this blueprint. Let's see what that's looking like. That's beautiful. I'm now starting to get some of these god rays poking through places. I'm going to try and do the same thing with the candles here. They've each got a light on them as well. And I don't want ya, and I don't need ya. I don't want it to resist or I'll beat ya. Because in that way, we get this really nice glow from where the candles are. <laughs> okay, so let me hit save all here. I'm going to bounce into one of the other maps. Start with the menu map. Took it to do do it. Took it to do do it. Okay, this map I don't think has an exponential height fog. Took it to go do it. It does. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's looking good. And I need my ending map to be the same. So do I have an exponential height fog in here? Point two, two, reset this. What's up, Yash? How you doing, brother? The beautiful people. The beautiful people. Okay. Save all. Now that I've saved all those maps. Where did they get that car? Whoa, damn near knocked my phone off. Okay. Okay, I'm really happy with all of that now. I'm going to save. I think it added a little bit more atmosphere to the place. 
So, uh, let's see what's next here. Totems, 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 totems. Everything is totems. Always. Always visit totems. Uh, I didn't finish the dagger, and I've got a fiddle to do. Okay, so let's do, I'm going to go back and look at my documentation here. Totems. There they go. Is it this one? That's the one I want to see. Uh, metal shackle I can do now. Frozen. Oh, and the Raggedy Ann. I got a fucking oh, a stupid idea. Whose idea was that? Stupid idea. Make a goddamn Raggedy Ann. <laughs> it's my own fault. My own fault. Uh, all right. So let's go. I don't see it here. Oh, I saved it as an FBX while I was unwrapping it. Which means we gotta go to Maya. Okay, I need a metal bolt. That'll be easy enough. I gotta make a chainsaw. I need to make an oil lamp. Mini Andre 2, Pocket Mirror. There's a bunch of these things. What I expect if I don't belong, who would have guessed it? So almost all these totems here are getting put, put together. I think I'm a... Damn it. Uh, I think I'm at 30 totems. Uh, what am I doing here? FBX, totems, and the... Shoot, what was it called? Uh, this is for the kaiju. Okay. The side reflecting. Who would have guessed it? I didn't name anything yet on this. Not too late. It's never too late. It'll be all right. Mine doesn't normally hang like this when I hit optimize. The light we have. Uh, let's do cylindrical mapping on this sucker. And do this. Thus. Thus. What I expected. Do do go. Be all right. 
Damn it. Not too late. Maybe we'll turn it around cause it's not too late. So what are you working on, Yash? What do you got going? I mean, I know you've got a new job starting, but you must be... You must be plugging away on something. Or am I totally off basis here and you're... You're just taking it easy before the job starts. It's almost there. Yash is not there anymore. He came in, said boo, and left. I haven't seen Bobby in a little while. I wonder what that guy's up to. And why he's not here. Bum, bum, bum. That thing's good. I'm trying to separate the pieces here that I had unwrapped that I was pleased with and the stuff that uh well that wasn't So, I'm thinking ahead here of texturing this thing, too, of what I'm going to do with it. And uh, I'm, of, I'm of two minds. Hey, Harsh. How you doing, brother? Welcome aboard. Got a lot of the, uh, the old RCC crew coming in. Pedro was here a little, uh, little while ago. And I got Harsh coming in for a visit. Brandon was here. I think that's done. That's done. That's done. That's the pommel. It's done. That's the coin. It's done. The dragon foot is done. Do do do. These guys over here. Uh, let's deal with deal with some pipes. There's a bunch of pipes need unwrapping. I'm carrying the wheel. Thanks for all you've shown us. I'm good, man. I'm good. 
I'm busy as all hell, but, uh, but good nonetheless. Choo choo train left right on time. What is this? Mouth hole is done. Including the base of the mouth hole. Do, 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 do. Mmm. This didn't split the way I wanted it to. Okay, let's move this up here. And you know what else? Going as he planned. Injured his hand. That's better. Almost. The workers are going home. Workers are going home. What? Uh, move all that over there. That one's already split. This one is not. Bum 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 bum. Mm. Same deal. These guys all have caps on them. So one of the one of the things that affects me. I don't know if this affects anybody else. Working on stuff, but fatigue is definitely one of those things that starts to impact me as a project moves on. And uh, the way that I'm impacted by fatigue is I stop caring about things that I should be caring about while I'm working on them. Um, and and doing UVs on a piece like this is a, is a prime example of that where, you know, I know what I should be doing UV-wise with this and... You know, if this was a hero prop in a game, I would be doing it a certain way uh, compared to what I'm doing now, which is, you know, not not doing a great job on it. Um, and part of that is fatigue. You know, part of that is that I've I've spent so much time working on this on this project that I, you know, I'm kind of done with it mentally. And uh, and anybody who's watched me work, whether it's uh, you know stuff in class or anything like that. Um, I have, I have a trick that I use to defeat the fatigue that is not always something you can do when you're in a professional environment, when you're working in a studio or something like that. Um, but it is something that I've, I've taken to doing because it, uh, it defeats it in me and I'm aware that it defeats it in me and, and I kind of take advantage of that. And what I'm speaking of is uh, having more than one thing to work on at a time. Um, you know, two projects that I bounce back and forth between. And when I have two projects that I can bounce back and forth uh, in between these two things, when one of them starts draining on me, you know, gets to the point where I, uh, oh, I don't want to look at this anymore. And I, you know, I, I hit that point where I stop caring about what it is that I'm doing. Um, you know, well, a that's a, that's a sign that that the the fatigue is kicked in. 
And that's usually an indicator for me to, you know what, let's, let's shelf this. Let's put it away for a little while and, uh, and come back to it when you're, when you're fresh or better yet, when you're suffering from that same fatigue from another project. And, uh, in the case of this, I don't really have that option. I got to get this done. Um, summer's half over. And so I'm getting to a point now where I've got a cubic buttload of, uh, a cubic buttload of paperwork to do for the schools in terms of preparing my semester and, uh, you know, going through the assignments, updating what needs to be updated, making sure that it's the latest version of everything that's, that the school has. Um, this game I'm, I'm treating as it's, as it's part of that, right? As it's, it's part of my schoolwork. Um, and so I don't have that luxury of putting it away and being able to come back and revisit it later. It's something that I've kind of just got to grit my teeth and, uh, and get through it, uh, which, you know, can, can really, really suck, uh, in some, in some instances, um, but it's one of those things, you know, it's just the work's going to get done and uh, ain't nobody else going to do it. And so, you know, I just got to kind of grit through it. I think one of the things that is um, especially making the fatigue noticeable with this project would be the fact that I have um, only been able to work on this for a couple of hours every day. And that, I think, is it's it's by nature slowing me down and that is a little gut-wrenching um because you know i i know i could go faster with this if i were to only be working on this but you know i've got uh i've got regular everyday work with the studio that needs completing and you know i'm i'm getting paid for that i'm not well i'm getting paid for this too but um, it's not the same thing. My studio work takes precedence over anything else. And so that's why, you know, I don't, I can't work on this during the days. Um, but it is one of those things that it is, you know, kind of artificially reinforcing the fatigue by making it feel longer than, than I've actually been working on this. And so it's one of those things that would be really, really, really nice to, uh, to be able to kind of knock this thing out, get it done, and and move on to to something else, um, or even just have something else to work on, you know, where you can you can put this aside for one day and uh, come back to it for another, you know, another couple hours and a day later or what have you. But it's you know, again uh, the way that this thing is shaping up and the way that my time is being distributed right now, not an option. And so I kind of just got to, I got to plow through it. And so it is what it is. And that's all that it is. And so I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling this and that other people feel this fatigue as well. Anybody have any tricks? Eh? Anybody have any any ways that they deal with the fatigue? I know it can be different when you're a student or former student or recently graduated student and you're, you're now in a look for work uh, scenario uh, because that can, I mean, obviously you're, you're working with a great purpose in mind, right? And, securing a job um that uh you know is a little different than uh, than this type of stuff that i'm doing you know this is this little game thing that i'm making you know this isn't i could very easily teach in september without this thing and just assign characters to students um and so it's not like this is a a mandatory thing that i'm working on and that my job goes away if i don't get this done um, it's not that type of, uh, not that type of project. It's just a project to try and make my class better. I'm one of these people that it doesn't matter what job I've, I've ever had. 
uh, I try and do that job well. Um, I've always been, always been that that fella that um, you know tries to do tries to do his best whenever he can. And uh, that's kind of what I'm doing with this. And I was trying to trying to be the best I can be. Best of the best of the best. <laughs> with honor, sir. Okay, so we should have the three trumpet pistons. And the three sockets. And what is this? Who's that writer, John the Revelator? Now, one thing that uh, may not be as obvious to those of you watching is that while I am... Uh, <laughs> I am what appears to be very uh, motivated to do this, and uh, I am plugging away very hard on getting this done. There's a flip side to that work as well that uh, not a lot of people realize, which is I'm spending a lot of time not spending time with my wife. Um, she's been very, very understanding of the fact that I'm I'm trying to get this done part of that is that she's a teacher too and she's i mean she's a better teacher than i am um and so she kind of understands you know wanting to get this stuff done for for my students and to make the best class that i can but you know it's i've no doubt that it's it's wearing on her that she's spending all of these evenings that i'm live streaming she's you know upstairs by herself um the kids have gone to bed and you know it's just her um, which is, that's the reason I don't live stream on weekends is that, you know, uh, I'd be divorced if I, if I told her it was going to be seven days a week. Um, you know, that's not, not cool to do that to anyone. And so there's that side of things too. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I try to, uh, I try to spend a little bit of time with her when I can. But it's uh, it ain't easy, man. It ain't easy um, trying to balance this and that, and spending time with the family and spending time with the wife. And uh, I mentioned last week that I was going to be uh, not working on the Thursday last week because it was my anniversary. Um, and that wasn't just uh, live streaming; that was everything. I uh, I took a day off from the studio as well, and you know it was just me and the wife and well and the kids too I mean, can't do anything without them but uh it's it's hard finding that balance um that work-life balance uh it's definitely something that uh it takes a little bit of getting used to if you've uh if you've not been in in the industry or you've not spent uh, a good amount of time doing this stuff you know the thing that makes anybody anybody good at doing any one particular thing and it doesn't matter if it's if it's game development or art or fine art or baking or playing the piano um or reading you know every skill that a human being has gets developed by practicing and so the more time you spend doing anything the better you're going to be at whatever that thing is um, and so part of this is also, you know, it's practice. It's getting better. Ugh, excuse me. It's getting better at that one thing that I want to be doing. Um, and I was mentioning the fatigue and taking a break between things. There's a, uh, there's another side of that too, which is, um, the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm bouncing around from piece to piece you know in that i i worked on this dagger uh last night last night no today's monday friday I worked on a friday did a little bit of work of it on 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 friday I haven't touched it for a few days 
Um, but when I did go back to the project, I didn't jump right back into the dagger. You know, I went and did something in the in the environment, something in the map. Um, and every now and then when you get kind of stuck on something like that, uh, it can help you to kind of step away and work on another aspect of your project. That is definitely where, where I am with the kid right now, you know. <sighs> oh, dying. Um, I've got a, a few things that I need to do on the kids still. And I've been putting them off because I hit a roadblock in how I wanted to do them. And in in trying to find a solution to one of those roadblocks, um, you know, I kind of work it on... I work on it in my mind. I store it away somewhere for a little while, and I think, oh, what if I did this? What if I did that? And I try to find a solution to, you know, the problems that I'm facing or... Um, how to how to move forward on some of these things when a system doesn't work or you know a technique doesn't work, and so that's why I'm I'm you know bouncing kind of from asset to asset here when I do this. It's uh, it's a great way to kind of keep fresh and not get frustrated with things. Um, frustration can can get the better of any of us, and so I like to make sure when I can that I. Uh, I take a break from some things and not from other things. So this did a pretty decent job of packing, uh, but I can tell that right now my packing algorithm is not using rotation, uh, which is a little bit of a problem for me because these things should be straight. And so I'm going to go and rotate them here uh, this way, and I'm going to pack this again. How much of a problem that's going to be? I have some polygons that didn't get selected when I tried to marquee everything. I don't imagine it'll be uh, an issue. But we'll let it go. While this is uh, UVing here, I'm going to start plugging away on one of the other totems. Just while I have this idea that's kind of fresh in my head um, of what I'm going to do with this totem. So the, the totem in question that I have to make is a uh, neck shackle. And uh, I'm going to go do a little uh, giggling here. See if I can't find a little bit of uh, reference to follow. Okay. Let's go in here. Let's kill this first of all. Um, since this is going to kind of be on screen on its own, I can afford to give it a few more segments to try and uh, increase its resolution, um, so that when you're when you're actually interacting with it and looking at it, it still looks um, round instead of looking low poly. Uh, let's increase this radius. I think five. Oi. There we go. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to place it at the origin here, so it's going to make it a little bit easier to work with. Like so. And then in the top view, we're going to go and delete two segments. These two. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to straighten this out a little bit. To do that, I'm going to grab the vertex and its X position. Make sure that I'm reset here so that this works the right way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these vertices and paste them in that X position. Like so. Now I'll do the same thing with this side. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to turn on my edge constraint so that it doesn't just move sideways, but it curves up a little bit, which I think might give it a better, a better look. So the goal here, this is a uh, neck shackle that I need to make, uh, which is for the, uh, the goblin totem. 
The idea is that, ooh, let's make this zero. I'll pull it, pull it out this way. Yeah, somewhere about there. This is just going to be a, uh, just a big iron shackle. I might put two links of chain here on it to, uh, to close it off. But, uh, but yeah, that's all this thing is. Let's line these up in Y. And I'm going to need to uh, make a few cuts here on these. I'm going to want to round this off. Maybe I'll do it with a chamfer. And that. You know, one more segment. Again, there's not going to be a lot of topology in this, so I can afford to kind of waste a little bit in making it really nice and clean, getting rid of a lot of these really sharp edges, um, which will make this look really, really good, I'm hoping. Um, I'm going to put a bolt through here and a couple of rings. So I think I'm good with that. Let's go and do the, uh, the chamfering on this. So these two edges and the outer edges. And do this. Just select through here and here. This is going to be a little easier to do if I do it this way. Okay, let's make sure I've got everything. I forgot that one. Okay, that looks decent. Let's go and chamfer this. And again, I'm not looking for a very large chamfer here. Just enough so that this thing doesn't look. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's cancel that. I'm go to vertices and I'm going to target weld. This doesn't need to live here anymore. So I'm going to go back here with it and then go back to the edges and see if I got a better result. I was just looking at the chamfer going on in that corner and how ugly it was. Okay. I think that's decent. I think the only thing I would like to change is I'm just going to chamfer these edges too just to maintain the uh the cleanliness of the topology. Again, I'm it's such a low poly asset that I'm not really worried too much about uh about its polygon count. I mean, that's it's 90% of the asset right there and I'm only at 1000 polys. And so Bobby, I was asking where you were a little earlier, my friend. How's it going, brother? So this guy looks good. We're going to go and overwrite the other one. Export selection. Export selection. Desktop projects. Cabin in the Woods FBX. Totem meshes. And this is Kaiju. So we shall overwrite the Kaiju. Uh, while that one is being overwritten, I'm going to move forward with the shackle here. Um, let's do a side view. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing you, bud. I'm getting to that point where the schools are uh, starting to start getting a little little demanding in terms of the uh, the amount of work they want done. I've got paperwork coming out the wazoo. I've got to do. I am. I hate paperwork. I hate it in all facets of life. 
I am not a fan of filling out forms. My wife, she's my official form filler router. I just, I hate doing that stuff. And we're at a a point here with the schools where I'm I'm going through a ton of paperwork right now. With, you know, the new curriculum and uh, one of the schools. And also looking at um, uh, revamping my assignments and making sure that they're all up to snuff and everything. It's, uh, it's definitely, definitely a lot of work. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need to put a bolt through here. Work all night on some fun projects, eh? Anything you can, uh, anything you can share, Bobby? Anything you're allowed to speak about in the open? Or is this all hush hush? Hush now, baby. Don't say a word. What's up, Bray? How you doing, brother? Fair enough. Fair enough. It uh, it took me a little while to um, hone in, as it were, on an assignment that I was happy doing with the students. Um, I did I did several takes on learning to model assignments, uh, trying to find something that. You know, made sure it went through the tools and that students were were learning it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I ended up in a good place, I think. So I think I'm going to do this. Come on, I dare you. And then... Kick Max and its stupid teeth. I don't need this. This or this. <clears throat> we found out what we were made of. Are you with me? Okay, so I think what I'll do now is chamfer these guys too. Again, it's not really necessary, but I've got the topology to play with, so I might as well make it look as good as I can get it. Von Neck Shackle. Comptroller is Levi, my friend. No, uh, actually, I started. Uh, I started working on this because the uh, the dagger was packing in Maya, and so instead of just sitting there with an empty screen while it was packing the UVs, um, I I switched over to make something else really quick and brainless. Which is this guy, the neck shackle. So I'm going to export this now. 
This is the next shackle, which is for the goblin. Evil goblin? The goblin. Where the frick's a goblin? Oh, he's a dismemberment goblin. Are you with me? Okay, so now that that's done, I can do this, and we'll import the kaiju. Cabin in the Woods, FBX, Totem Meshes, and Kaiju. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is reset this. And now that I have that... Oh, I got you, my... Why you got to do this to me? You feel that? Hmm. You better hold on. Oh, and the whole frickin' thing shifted to Bastich. Bastich. Why would it have shifted? That's pretty freaking close. Okay, effect pivot. All pivots. Go to the origin. She's a ten hell bent. I'm in heaven tonight. Tell you out of my mind. God damn it. Okay, this do both at once. Da 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 da. And a poly. UVWX form. Let's shift this over by one. Got me money. Keep on running. Yep, half dagger, half flute. I guess <laughs> flute isn't really the right terminology. They kind of they kind of went all over the place with it in terms of the musical instrument side of things. The the keys on the blade part are part of a clarinet. The keys on the handle are from a trumpet. Um the mouthpiece is neither. It's like a freaking harmonica or a kazoo. And so yeah, they kind of they're kind of all over the board with this thing. Anyway, let's name everything. Body underscore low. Hey, 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 hey. Give me a hell. Give me a yow. Give me a hell, give me a yeah. Okay, that looks better. And give me a hell. Okay, blade. <laughs> yeah, it's Hell Yeah by um, Rev Theory, which I believe is used in Mountain State. 
if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so this guy is the pipe low. On a couple rusty nails. Ain't worth a lot of money. But it damn sure ain't for sale. The good Lord only knows all the stories he could tell. Granddaddy's gone. Okay, do I... Attach all these guys together. Roebuck catalog. A many shells over the back of an old bird dog. When Grandma took the safety off, Granddaddy's gun. <clears throat> Gun is like a woman, son, it's all how you hold her. Okay, how we doing here? Claw. Claw. A day I turn 13, a half shot box of shells, and a kit to keep it clean. On the case of that sweet old man and me, uh, these are, I'm going to attach all three together. Um, key sockets low. A gun is like a woman's on a tall how you hold her. Uh, pommel button low. There's a long beard hanging on my rhythm wall that I got with a box call and... Okay, that looks like everything's named. Out there on 49, that me and Billy Joe shot up one night. Just gonna go and center it this way, too. And we'll go and drop these. Man, I haven't seen that in forever. Is that the... That's Cusack in that one, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Kaiju. 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 Okay, next we open the layers. The ads of... Currently selected to a layer called low, which I will select everything. Clone. Spacey, that's who it was. Cusack's in one that's similar, and I keep getting the two mixed up. It's the one where he's an alien, right? Spacey's an alien? Is that it? I don't recall. I don't recall now. Wanna see some palm trees? Oh, 
Watch the world die. Yeah. As memory serves. Okay, so the blade high poly is going to be unique in that I'm going to be using the smoothing groups on my turbo smooth to prevent from getting uh, rounding where I don't want it. So I always want the blade to look sharp. Get grid out of here. Well, that's the idea, Mike, right? Like you are, you are one of my students. And the whole goal here is to make something that all of the students have that kind of pit of nostalgia towards, right? And so that is why I'm making, you know, there's a Power Rangers dagger and I'm making the ghost trap and I'm making like, it's not just your childhood. It's a little piece of hopefully everyone's childhood that everyone's got that. Oh man, there's that thing. I'm trying to kind of hit every, not genre, but every, every age group. You know, I'm trying to make sure that older students can relate to some things and younger students can relate to some things and that there's just a, a thing for everyone, right? Did you see um, Jason David Frank competing in MMA? Because that was one of those things that I was just like, what the fuck? How do you, how do you, how do you go up against that guy? Where they're like, in this corner, we've got Bob. And his competition in the other corner is the green fucking ranger. Go home, Bob. And granted, like he didn't he didn't fight anyone of note. But still, man. I've got the uh so I've got Stadia. I've got the uh, the the game, uh, the Power Rangers fighting game. Uh, it was one of my free ones the other month. And I tell you, man, it's one of the greatest freaking things in the world, playing a Power Ranger fighting game. You know, I brought my kid to go see it. Um, my kid loved the Power Rangers. He, um, there was something that he could just identify with. And I, I know exactly what it was. I, I groomed him to love the Power Rangers. Because um, he, he grew up watching Paw Patrol. And Paw Patrol is the fucking Power Rangers with puppies. And so when he saw what the Power Rangers were, he was just like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever. It's like someone made an adult version of my kid show. Seven. And so um, when the movie came out, I was like, buddy, we got to go watch this movie. And uh, and he loved it. He thought it was fantastic. I was I was more disappointed with it than. Uh, than I think others were. Um, 
you know, it wasn't it wasn't a terrible movie, but uh, it definitely wasn't going to bring the franchise back. And you know, I wonder, I wonder how much of that was you know studio interference and executives you know doing what executives do, um, and interfering with it in that way. But man, oh man. Shite. They even thought they were going to do more movies, right? Because they have the whole Tommy Oliver thing at the end. But there was something badass about the, like, even playing the, 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 the song from the show uh, in it. You know, it was, it was one of those moments of, like, hell yeah, in the theater. Let's put it this way. I like it better than any of the DC movies. Um, but that's not saying much. I think I like getting kicked in the nuts better than any of the DC movies. Okay, what's going on here? We have Israel. Okay, that's holding up. I am a little worried about the blade, that I'm losing so much of the tip. The last knife that I did a bake on, I ended up losing, I ended up rounding the tip on me, which, you know, didn't, obviously didn't look good. Bum, 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 bum. And this here is going to be a problem too. I think I've got to this, this, this. Do the other one, actually. Let's check this one before we do the other side. Okay, I mean, it's, it's better. The blade is still getting chewed here. Okay. The only way I have to fix this is to put another edge in. Okay, that's holding. Uh, Kamish. C-O-M-M-I-S-H. Uh, at least that's what I named him in the server. I don't know if you guys see the names that I... I name people. Doesn't look like he's on right now. And all my heroes at the Methadone Clinics. It's all 
and it's all in fun. Just get in the pit and try to love someone. Okay. Now we'll move into the body. Bow with the bow, the bang, a bang, diggy, 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 said the boogie, said up, jump the boogie. All my heroes in the and sell block six. And for DB Cooper and the money he took. But that ain't fun. Just get in a pit and try to love someone. We get you right. Let's do this. Bow with the bow the bang a bang diggy 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 booby. Bow with the bow the bang a bang diggy 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 sit the boogie sit up jump the boogie. Boo do 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 do. Yeah, I gotta bring it down even further. Mm, too much. Beautiful. Bow with the bow, the bang, a bang, diggy, 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 said the boogie, said up, jump the boogie. Diggy, 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 up, jump the boogie. Bow with the bow, the bang, a bang, diggy, diggy, diggy. Oh, yeah. That part was easy. That was easy. Good stuff, Bobby. Get ready, cuz this is war. Mm -hmm. All that I'm trying to say.
Okay, that's what I can do about coloring this goddamn thing. Get ready, cause it saves more. I think that's the best way to do it, Bobby, is have everything all out there in the open. When I was when I was younger, I used to go to portfolio reviews, but they were at comic conventions and we would uh we would bring our portfolios to to these professional comic book artists um in the hopes of, you know, being discovered kind of thing. Looking back at it now, like it was so nowhere near being good enough to get discovered but um but it was one of those things that like you got reviewed with a with a handful of people around you um you know there was no hiding anything which i mean you want to get into that mindset you want to get into the you know i don't i don't care who looks at my portfolio like my portfolio is fucking killer anybody should be able to look at it go look at my portfolio look at how awesome it is um that's what you want to that's the the mentality you want to have um hiding i'm i'm embarrassed i don't think it's good enough i don't uh, you're not going to get work that way and so yeah you definitely want to uh want to have it open and again you might like bobby said you might hear something uh that somebody is talking about somebody else's portfolio that applies to you but didn't get mentioned and you know that's a really big deal uh to be able to get that little bit of extra information too They're gonna lock me up and throw away the key, but they're never gonna hold down a freak like me. Do 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 do. Either or, Mike. Uh, what am I doing here? OBJB Hop Holly Ticket to Ticket to do do do. Let's go. ID Mesh Maps. I mean, occlusion crank it. Thickness crank it. And let's see how this goes. I guess I gotta look up pictures of this goddamn thing again so I can um, texture it correctly. Dragon Zord Dagger. Okay, so the first thing I should do is do the additional normals. There's a few things that I did not, I didn't model that need to be added to this as well. I do have a few ugly normals showing up, but I think I'm not gonna not gonna care about those. We're gonna move on regardless. I think everything else is gonna hold up okay. Um, so I've got on the, uh, on the blade, a little curly Q thing that goes right here, which I think I might actually be able to just hand paint this and then same thing. There's a couple of weird symbols that go here. 
Those ones I might actually make a stamp for, because there are four of them on each side that all need to be the same. Mine. No, I don't care. If you... So let's do another paint layer. You post it in the Discord? Way better, Bray. Yeah, the amount of wear and tear you've got in the wood now is really good. It's really starting to read as... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that really stands out to me, Bray, right now is in the cube uh, in the middle of the receiver holder. It looks like there's a funny normal map there, almost like a smoothing group normal map is not doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, let's see what I can do with this thing. Now, it's supposed to be symmetrical, and I'm hoping that I can symmetrical... I need it to go, I believe it's Y. Yeah, and I'm going to have to offset it. I hate when this happens. There. No. And the point oh one. Negative point oh four. Negative. Come on. Yeah, where that little detail is. It looks like there's either a, a smoothing group issue with it. Come on, man. Negative point oh three five. Okay. It's not quite there. There. And lead you to the dance floor. Okay, we're only doing height here. I'm never going to dance again. Okay, so there's that one. And then there's the dragon. I don't know why they did this. But they essentially redraw. This shape. And then here. They've got that shape, so that's definitely one I'm going to have to. Make elsewhere. Pain is all you'll find. Bum bum. Okay, um, I'm going to do this with a line. Something like that, something like that, 
and something like that. Come on, you. Okay, regardless. Uh, that should be good. Stroke path. Too big a stroke. Let's go back into the brush here. No, you're not a fool. Boom, boom. There we go. Let's do this. Okay, weird. Are you not rasterized? It's rasterized. Oh, there's no black in it. That's why it's only one pixels. Um, I think this is going to work. Let me do this. Let me duplicate this. What the fuck? Duplicate this. Filter. Blur. Gaussian blur. That's not what I want at all. If I had to, would you like that? Would you like that? I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this from an image of filigree instead of trying to make my own. Which looks like this. So the one in question that I want is this one. As I lie down. Would you like that? Would you like that? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll place this here. Let's get rid of these guys. Okay, I'm going to invert this, duplicate it, transform and flip vertically. What is going on, man? Transform, flip vertically. There we go. Like that. And we'll flip them horizontally. We'll do that. Screen. And that's what I want. Okay, so there's going to be a PNG, Kevin in the Woods, Reference, that filigree, 
Okay, spelled that right. No, one L. Van L. Okay, so let's bring that in. Uh, projects. Cabin in the woods. Uh, reference images and filigree. Where is my filigree? Digga digga do. Digga digga do. Do. I'm going to bring this in as an alpha. And now we're going to change our mirror to be Z. That should do it. No, mm -hmm. in front of you again, and go. Hold on. There's my stencil. Where's the other one I want to brought in? Not again. B, C, F, Ligri. Uh, stencil. So now we just line this up. Make my brush nice and, oh, artifact. Wow. That means there's a spike before the black. Back where it began, and to a stand in front of you again. That's better. Beautiful. Let's kill the stencil. Yeah, it's on the square, Bray. Right? There's a cube on the uh, on the receiver. Let me go look. Yeah, that's the one, brother. Yeah, in the the first shot that you posted, it looks way better in the second in the 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 most recent shot that you did. But the um, in that first shot, it looks like you're I don't know, like maybe there's a smoothing group issue where the normal is. It looks a little wobbly. It might just be the reflection of the light. But I definitely, in, in that second picture you posted, or the, the third picture you posted, uh, it looks way better. Okay, so... I got an additional height layer to which I will add an anchor point. And now we can, uh, we can go and start texturing this sucker. So the first material I need is gold. Um... Let me go check this guy out. It's actually this color that I really like. I don't, uh, the pattern is of no consequence to me. Um, I'm gonna bring this gold in, but what I'm gonna do with this gold, can I copy this? I can't copy this. I was hoping to be able to Let's go eyedropper the gold. How's that? 
a little darker. Oh no, that's good. Okay, so let's delete this layer. It's just that color that I wanted. Uh, metallic is up, roughness is down. I'm gonna bring the roughness down a little bit more. Okay. Hey now. All you winners, put your lights on. Okay, okay. Um, so I want this to be a little bit imperfect in terms of the metal. So I'm going to add a fill to this. The fill is just going to be in rough. And inside the rough, let's go look for... Let's, in the fill, add a generator. I think I'm doing this backwards. I'm doing this backwards. No, add a fill. Add a generator to the fill. There we go. Yeah, that's totally not what I wanted. I don't want the fill either. In the roughness. Um... I need to do this again. Add a fill? The fill is just going to be rough. And in the rough, and dripping rust. Okay. Put the contrast down. Bring the drip intensity up. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man. That looks terrible. And I don't disagree, not on any one particular point. However, the goal here is to be very, very subtle in what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is get this to look about the way that I want it to look. And then I'm going to pull down the, uh, the roughness on this. Let's go to rough. And I can really pull that down so that it ends up just being a subtle, subtle effect on the gold. I don't want it to look discolored or uh, tarnished or anything like that. Especially if it's gold. Gold doesn't actually tarnish. One of the reasons they use it on spacecraft. Uh, I am getting some lineage. So let's try and put this onto triplanar projection. What the hell? That's funny, I can actually, I can see my UVs. It's not doing anywhere near what I wanted it to do. Let's go use a grunge map here instead. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, I'm pleased with that. So I'm going to add a uh, black mass to this. And then we're going to go into our color selection element here, and we can start grabbing the gold bits. Damn it. Uh, the entire back cap of the pommel, the coin, the 
but much too young. Okay, none of the very front. This is going to be easier done. In 2D. Do, 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 do. Okay. So I'm pleased with that. That's the gold elements of this thing. We now need a similar type of effect, but in silver. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the brass. And we'll call this silver. And we'll kill the, um, the mask. Make it a white mask for now. And then I can go into the color. And get the silver hue right. Then go back in here and add a black mask. And go back into my selection mode. No. Nope. Selection mode. And start selecting the silver bits. It looks like it's just the blade. So let's grab this. And then what I'll do is I'll, re I'll add the green on top of that so that it works. Okay, so we need a black material now. And uh, in my mind, I should be going Parkerized Steel with this. Even though I think in all versions of this, it's, uh, I'm going to use painted steel. I think it's all just plastic in every version of this I've seen. However, I think it'll look better like this. Uh, black, select this guy. Okay, don't do that. Back into 2D. And polygons. Here down. It's for fools that fall behind. Not somewhere between. Let me make sure I keep spinning it around to look at the other side. Okay, now I gotta make some green. Now in the actual dagger, and I don't know how many of you guys have actually picked up on this when you, if you've ever seen this thing before, but in the actual dagger, this part of the blade is actually glass. Um, it's meant to be completely translucent, and you can actually just see the, the flute part of it, and the blade hovers above it. Um, not at all what I'm going to be doing. Uh, no, no, no sorry, Bob. No, all the no. Not wasting any kind of translucency on this thing. So I'm going to start with a uh, a plastic grainy here. And I'm going to play around with the scale until I get it to read quite nicely. 
We're going to go into the greenest of greens. Like so. We'll add a black mask to this. And we'll go into our selection tool. Start with polygons and go right down the middle of this. And then this is going to be easier to do in 2D. Which is these guys. I've gone too far. Yeah, it's supposed to stop there. And there. The only other real big uh, thing that I should do is there's typically noise on the coin. Um, underneath the uh, the claw and so I may go and add some of that so we're gonna go to the brass pure I'm gonna add a fill layer which is just gonna be height information let's go to this plastic grainy and see what they're using for height here mm, nothing let's do this I'm gonna call this coin bump and let's just use some Perlin noise and get the scale right again it's only on the coin here that I'm interested in it's really strong so we'll bump down to height We'll kill this a bunch. There. So add a black mask, selection in white with UVs, and the coin. And there. So now I'm just going to dusty dirty it up, and uh, she'll be good to go. Okay, so first step in adding dust is to make me some dust. I'm going to go kind of off-white here in this tan color. Make it quite rough. I'm going to name this... We're going to add a black mask, and then uh, let's go into our smart masks. There's a couple of really nice dusty ones here. That's edge dust. It's actually occlusion dust I want. Just going to do something like that. I just want to make sure it's paying attention to my little painted details here. So I'm going to go into the micro height, use the anchor point. Go into the micro details and turn on the height and then tell it to use the height information so that those guys get their detail as well. And pull that up a little bit. Okay. I don't think I want to make this any dirtier than that. I think my, my goal here is to make this still look pretty pristine. And so... I think that's all I want to do. 
Yeah, I'm looking at reference. I don't think I really want to dirty it up too much. I think with the uh, the amount of texturing here, oh, there's some there's some uglies in there. So I think I'm going to try and do another bake and lower my numbers down earlier. Again, just because this is an object that we can interact with. I'm going to add a zero. And rebake this and just see if it does a better job in some of these areas here. Oh, well, looks like I did, did a much better job there. Yeah, I did a much better job. Okay. Let's spit out some textures and call this a day. So we're going to go to projects, cabin in the woods, textures. Thank you. Let's go set our Unreal Engine preset and export and I should be good in the engine to actually go pull this sucker in so again if you haven't experienced how well my system works here um, for being able to pull in new versions of these things again I've got all of my things already exported as teapots and I'm just overwriting them every time I make one of these things so literally all I have to do is go find the kaiju there it is there Right click and re import. Uh, and it can't find the file because I've renamed it since. But it's right there, Kaiju. And we'll reset the materials to the FBX. And there's the dagger now. I now go to my textures and materials. And I'll go into this folder and import them. This is the folder I'm using for all the ones that share a material. So I'll go to textures, Kaiju. Grab these three and import them. We're going to go and change the uh, RGB settings on this one to sRGB off. We'll make a clone of this material, which we'll call MI Kaiju. And then we'll go and turn on the parameters, replace the parameters. And that's it. That material is good to go. Uh, probably want to rename these things. Don't need the Lambertian name in there. And so we'll go and clean that up. Okay, so let's go into the props again. Let's go into the dagger. And here we'll am I kaiju. And there's the material and engine. This looks pretty good. Now to add this to my world, again, all I have to do is go into my blueprints. These ones. Grab a new child and put it in the world. In that new child, we gotta go find where Kaiju is, which is two, one. There it is. And now, that's it, the whole system works. I just have to change this number to one, and that's it. So now, the only other thing I gotta do is decide where this thing goes. And so, we need another place on the shelf. The kaiju is one of those ones that I think would be fun for a lot of students to do, so I might make this a little bit more prominent in its visibility. So maybe what I'll do is I'll leave it on the table here. Rotate it. 
90 degrees that way. One more. The cower down below is what you call defeat. Okay. I think my lights are too bright now. I think I've got to fix the uh, the blur on this again. On any of the assets that are like this, that are not, uh, they're a little bit more irregular in shape. It doesn't do a good job of blurring them. It gets a little overly blurry. But anyway, that works. Looks like a replica from that 90s TV show. Some kind of half dagger, half wind instrument. I wonder what happens if you give it a blow. Okay, I gotta tone the lights down. It gets really freaking bright in there. Cabin in the woods, I'm in the right map. Oh, right, it's my blueprint. It's a blueprint light. Mesh. Blueprint. Viewport. Grab the point light. Jesus, that got real dark. Oh, there we go. There's the entomology case, which, yes, I know is probably more accurately called a lepidoptery case. Uh, I didn't put anything in here that wasn't a butterfly. I thought there was something here. It's not. I think I might have to create a light that uh, that shines on the assets when you pick them up. Some of them are so dark when you pick them up that they're really hard to uh, really hard to see.
So I'm almost at a point where you, you can barely move without something else getting highlighted and showing up. I found a way to throw my guitar in here. I went and dirtied it up and grungied it a little bit. There's a wonky talkie in the shelf here too. I do have to go and put a bunch more of the uh, cobwebs in, too. And I want to put something in the sink. I don't know what's going to go in the sink yet, but something's going to go in the sink, goddammit. Man, I dig it. Excellent. I'm quite happy with how that went. And that brings us to midnight. The sponge from Goosebumps. I've never I've never goosebumped in my life, my friend. I don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, I'm really pleased with the way that this is turning out. It's another totem. Go back and look at my totems here. I still have to finish the helmet. This one, it keeps escaping me because I've already put it in the game. Um, let's count teapots here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So I'm one totem away from the halfway point of getting all of these things done. Uh, which, again, as I mentioned, in Max, I did the um, the Goblin. And so I've just got to go put a uh, rusty metal texture on that, and that one will be done. Um, and some of these things are going to be really, really easy to do. The uh, the reanimated is a, it's just a, a, a very large bolt. It's a neck bolt, Frankenstein's neck. Um, and so that's one that, that will be, like, super simple to make. Um... I've got a uh, the doctor, which is going to be a little uh, medical satchel. I've got to make uh, the devil. I'm I've got a plan for that. Uh, the giant is a nail clipper. I'm actually, I'm at the point where I actually know most of the totems now. Deadite is the chunk of wood. Jin is the lamp. Doppelganger is the book. Comic book. Etten is the Etten is the book. I gotta do a ball yarn for Felinus. The ghoul is a tombstone. The gnome is a garden gnome. Neck shackle. T Rex skull. So that's one that I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna look online for. I'm gonna see if I can't find scan data from Sue um, and make a miniature version of Sue's skull. I think it'll work really good. The mutant is gonna be a little mini A bomb, which again should be a fairly easy thing to do. I need to do a badge for the mutant cyborg as well. But anyway, that is a good chunk of this put together. 
It's really starting to get moody in here now. Now that I got that volumetric fog working and uh and it actually does what it's supposed to do. It definitely gets brighter in game. I'm gonna have to check my uh post pro setting post process settings. But anyway, uh that'll do it for tonight. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go to bed and uh hit this with fresh eyes manana. And so thanks a lot for watching, uh, those of you who have been uh, sticking around here and for the lovely scintillating conversation. And, uh, and yeah, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.